Hi guys, my name is Bogdan from DNN Sharp. I have a question for you. How do you implement an API in DNN? Well, if you had to do this, you probably wrote some code, used maybe some libraries, but you no longer have to do this because here's a new module that we are going to release soon. It's called DNN API Endpoint. Currently it's in beta, so you can ask us for a build that you can test it out and help us improve it before release. And what, what it does, basically it lets you create methods that you can invoke remotely, for example, from JavaScript or from a mobile application or from a desktop application and so on. And let me just show you how it works. And what we are going to do in this video, we are going to create some methods and invoke them from action form. And we're going to invoke them from action form server side from a HTTP request action and client side from a, a binding on change binding from a button, for example. What I have here is the main screen of uh, DNA API endpoint. And here I have some API methods. I already have some methods, but I will start with a new method that let's say just outputs some text back. So I'll call this method maybe print and next I will have to choose the HTTP method. I'll create a post, enable it and then add some input data. Input data is basically like you have in action form, you have form fields. Here you have some parameters that you receive either uh, via query string, if it's a get operation, or you can receive uh, via post in this case because we created a uh, we selected the post for HTTP method and we will call this let's say name next thing that we want to do is create a list of action that is executed in response to this invocation and here if you've tried out modules you're already on a familiar ground this is uh, are all the actions from uh, action form you can uh, make HTTP request, you, make, you can uh, run a SQL query, you can do all the stuff you do in action form, but only this time the actions are triggered by an HTTP request. And then there are some special actions that just output a response. In this case, we can uh, output a JSON and we can uh, we will choose the name and then the value to output for this JSON. Let's say output, output, and then pass it a value. And here we can use the token syntax. Now, if you worked with our modules a lot, you already know all about the tokens. But if not, let me give you a quick explanation. Basically, all the fields, all the input that comes into our module, in this case into DNN API, but also into action forms or, or a chart scheduler, is uh, converted to tokens. Tokens means uh, uh, there is a name between square brackets which will get replaced with the actual value. In this case when this method is called with a value for the name it will be kept into this token. So now what I did I created a JSON and you'll see this in a few and better understand it that contains the name that was passed in. So I just reflected the name that was passed in. Here I could add more HTTP header, but for this video I don't need to. So I just save, go back, and you see now in the list I have a new print operation. You can click on it, expand it, see the URL that you need to invoke, and see the parameters that it accepts. So this is basically an overview of the action. But what's more important, we have a test button here that basically tests this method using jQuery. You can, we can just... Uh, puts a name here, I just put my name, Bogdan, and execute it. So you see, it produces a JSON with the output key, and then it reflects the name I put in, it reflects it back to me. Normally you wouldn't just do that, maybe normally you would run some query, and we can do this, I mean, we can go, run some query and say, I don't know, select, why not? name select and here you could write a SQL query to get your um, 
your data from somewhere and then as um, let's say first name and then we can extract first name and store it again under a different key and this way we create new tokens so the explanation that I started earlier goes like this you have this token that come from input but then you have new tokens that you create from actions like in this case I created the first name token I stored it under the first name and I put uh, the value from this column inside and then you have tokens that come from my tokens and there you can create custom tokens that again connect to various data sources it, they can connect to HTTP requests they can run SQL uh, queries and so on and now in JSON response for example I can say first name and this should bring me the same results that it did before I just uh, got it from a SQL query here that doesn't do anything actually it's just for showing you the possibilities I'm going to test this again my name is B and now it outputs B back to me so now that we have this API let's see how we can use it in action form so I created a new page here I will start with a blank action form module and the easiest thing we can do is just grab the jQuery example from that page and use it on a let's say on a button so I'll just set a button and we'll call it um, get name and here on the binding expression on change click I will have to return false so the button doesn't cause a post back and here before returning false I would have to make the uh, HTTP request to the API and I can just grab this, this example here and use it in here so this will make an HTTP request to this URL pass B let's write full B B O G D N and then on success here we can put the data somewhere and we can put it in a let's say in a text box so I will just add a text box I will call it a uh, name and then in the button I will write more code to say name equals data dot output what I did here I use again the token notation but in this case when I'm running on client side this actually gets replaced with J JavaScript variable that is bound to the text box normally you don't care about these details if you are not a JavaScript uh, programmer but if you are you just know that this actually is a variable so you know to do more things with it and here I just get the output from data because I know the HTTP request brings back a JSON that has an output parameter and this is not enough you should always call a method called refresh because what happens um, we use AngularJS a library that basically binds the data to variables and this happens at the end of a computing computing cycle let's call it like that but in this case because this query this uh, request is executed asynchronously this call is not uh, um, catched by AngularJS so we, we would have to notify it manually that actually the data was refreshed and the UI should be updated so let's save this and see that this actually works so let's just click the get name and bingo we have the name that was brought from the API module and this all of this worked client side so we all we did it from jQuery now this has the advantage that it's uh, called via Ajax the page doesn't reload it's all smooth but sometimes this data could be sensitive it could contain sensitive information that you don't want to put on your web page because the JavaScript the jQuery calls are visible to the client browser so a hacker could see all your internal methods and call them um himself to gain access to that information 
And in these cases, you would want to do the request from server side. And I will show you how to do this also. We will just use another button and call it get name server side. And in this button, we'll add a HTTP request, a server request that makes a call to the URL that we can get from here. And we can pass the data and here we will pass name equals and in this case I will just put John. And then we will pass it as post because the method accept only post. If we would do a get, we will get an error. The API would not work. And then we would want to store this as, let's say, uh, name. We just have to put a token name here. We can put it like this or like this. In this context, it doesn't matter. And now, after the request is executed, we need to send back data to the browser and we will do this with a message update form data. What this does, it takes everything that's in the context and passes back to the browser so the UI is refreshed. Okay, so let's save, go back and we will do it again, get name from server side. So we see we got all the output from that request. Normally we will just want to extract John and we can do that. We can do that with a, a um, regex action. Let me just show you how that works. Add action, parsing regex. So what this does, let's say we will store the um, name JSON. We'll store it under a different name. And then under the regex, again, we will use the token notation to get the response from the HTTP request that was declared above and parse it, store it in the name token and parse it using a regex. Now, a regex to you would have to have some basic uh, regex knowledge here, but you can always use this syntax to extract JSON. Just put the key name and then you follow it by a maybe a wild char and then you'd put in parentheses because what this um, uh, regex action does, it, ma it matches the first subgroup. So the first subgroup is what is used for storing into the name token. And maybe also make it eager. Let's see either this works. I'll just save, go back and get the name again. Yes, it worked. I expected no less than this. So we have John in our text box. So you see the two different methods. If you look with a uh, F12 with a, a network from uh, uh, the network inspector, you would see that the two requests are different. Now, for some of you, th this may be seem obvious, but I want to point out uh, anyway. If you will do the force button, the get name, let me just clear this. You will see that the HTTP request is made directly to the DNA API module. If you do the second button, you will see that the HTTP request it made to action form, so it's actually uh, some sort of a submit event, which in turn would call the DNN API module from server side. So in this case, the particulars about the API, the internal API, are masked from the end user. And that's the basic of it. That's that's uh, the beginning and now you can go into the API and create all sort of crazy things like you can create a um, REST API where you have for example let's say you want to add leads and you have uh, the post method for leads to create new leads and then you have the get method to get leads 
you have the delete methods to delete a lead and then you use parameters for all kind of data or you can also use uh, the HTTP headers for example to pass IDs or to pass a customer authentication tokens and all kinds of crazy stuff and that's it I hope you see the possibilities of this and I hope that I uh, succeeded to make you excited about this new release thank you for your time and uh, let us know if you need this module for beta testing bye